firefighter calling may they should attempt to isolate themselves or crew from the fire. So by closing a door, get yourself into a bedroom, a bathroom, something of that nature, or, um, something that's got a door so you can close it. If you've got the heavy fire pushing in on you, you need to isolate yourself. It'll at least buy you some time so that maybe the RIT team or whoever's coming to get you can make it there. Next, I see shall clear ops channel that Mayday has been called on and request all non-Mayday traffic be changed to a different ops channel. So in the handout that I gave you at the beginning of the course, it's got information directly related to this with the St. Francis County Mayday problem. So we've got four ops channels, one, two, three, and four. And if you didn't know this um, by now, you're going to learn something tonight because Ops 4 is the dedicated Mayday channel. So in the event that we have a Mayday on Ops 1, 2, 3, whatever you're working on, doesn't matter. 4 is where we're moving everybody that's not involved in the Mayday. So the IC or whoever's going to be communicating with the Mayday personnel needs to get on there and make an announcement that, hey, we have a Mayday event. All non-Mayday traffic or all personnel not involved in the Mayday move traffic to Ops 4. Okay? That gets a lot of the extra talk in and the chance that they're going to get you know, talked over. Uh, gets everybody out of the way basically so that it's, it's icy and the person, that's it. Them two talking together, keeping the area where, uh, clean. So this kind of touches on that same concept that we just spoke of. Only personnel remaining on the Mayday channel should be the IC, Mayday Ops, which is the folks that are involved with it. If you've got a RIP team, a RIP backup, and anybody that's in your crew to do the location of the Mayday. So, as we, we looked earlier in the, in the course, we, we saw on the graph from Project Mayday that oftentimes the folks making the rescue were just other working crews inside the building. So those people need to stay on that ops channel as well because even though they may not need to communicate or be talking on the radio, they can at least be monitoring the status and locations because it may be something as easy for them as just climbing up a stairwell and being able to, to help. So they're welcome to stay on the channel. It's also recommended that an alert tone be programmed into all officer handheld radio. That can be broadcast across any channel by the IC assist in clearing the channel. That's another one of those tech geeky cool things that our portable radios can do. Not all of them, but some. Um, if you have one that can, you can program them to actually drop an alert tone. And what we mean by alert tone is if you if you've listened to dispatch um, anytime like uh, let's say the weather weather alerts come through, where they drop the alert tone is that long steady beep or Depending on who's working, you might get a, a fancy we do, we do, we do or something. Um, that's an alert tone. So we can actually program those into portable radios. A series of buttons or a code, and you hit the transmit button, sends out this alert tone, and then the IC can actually broadcast their message. So they don't have to go through dispatch and take extra time to get a message put out to their, to their working crews. In the event that an alert tone is broadcast across an ops channel, all traffic should cease for the alert tone to be broadcast. So as soon as that alert tone goes off, you want to stop talking or stop attempting to talk because there's something important that's coming next. They're not just going to drop an alert tone to tell you, hey, that fire and the roof line went out. Great job. No, the alert tone indicates that something very important is about to come over the radio and we should all be quiet. There you have it, the alert tone should only be used in a mayday. So, I would like to think that Wolf Creek probably has, I'm thinking Mark probably has his uh, Kenwood set up to do that, if I, if I know him well enough. He likes that kind of stuff. All right, so we're gonna take a look at a video here, because as the, the incident commander, or whoever is talking, um, Ops, let's say the ops chief, right, or the section chief of operations, like if that's the person I'm talking to, I want that person to have a calm command presence, all right, because if, if they're screaming on the radio and getting all hyped up, 
I'm already excited on the inside with my mating. So they're hyped up and amped up on the outside. That's going to freak me out even more. What are they seeing that I'm not seeing? Okay, so this is an example of what you would want to hear or what you want to try to emulate as an instant commander or someone that's managing um, a mayday event. So take a listen to this. This guy does a really good job. Let me make sure my sound is on real quick. People use our training room and sometimes the speakers get turned off or put on a different set. Some dramatic recording uh, of radio traffic calls for help. Guys, here at the back. That for you was from yep. Tuesday morning. Three firefighters were hurt while fighting a house fire in the Natomas area. Here's a listen. All right, so we got a major, major. We've got Captain Hall with some interesting and Firefighters were hurt. Three have been released now from the hospital. Ch uh, Captain uh, Jeffrey Hellman is the most severely injured. He may need some skin grafts. You can listen to the entire recording if you so choose. It's on our website right now, kcra.com. All right, so he did a really good job of keeping his composure. And it's hard to do that sometimes, especially in the event of a mayday or something has went wrong on your fire ground. But it's, it's vitally important that you as the incident commander or whoever is communicating with those folks on the inside stay calm and controlled like, like this captain was. Um, because that is only going to help your situation and only help the potential that they get out of there safely. Kind of think of, of dispatch in a sense too. If, if you guys know Steve Worley, you know, those are the types that you want on the other side of the radio when things are going wrong. because. Guys like Doug Graham and Steve Worley, they just have this monotone, no excitement. You know, the building could be burning down around them, and they're still going to dispatch the same way every single time. But what's that do for, for us in the field? You know, it, it helps us to, to remain calm. And if you got a dispatcher, maybe somebody that's newer or hasn't been exposed to it much, they get excited, it gets you excited. It's just, it's just the nature of the beast. So be that guy. That's what we need. Uh, no. All right, so I told you earlier that we had some options when it came to calling the mayday, and I will deliver as promised. So an alternative mayday method. You can, okay? You can is a shorter, quicker acronym that speeds the mayday calling process and effort. It's less to remember. And I can tell you that when it happens, you're going to need as little as you want to be able to remember. So unit. The first one is a U. Unit. Unit number is calling in May. 36, 16, 42, 52, whoever you are. Doesn't matter. C is the conditions. What are the current conditions affecting the May? Actions is the A. What actions are being taken by the May personnel? And N is the needs. What needs are being requested for May Day? So it's a short, just to the point, who are you, what happened, what's going on, and what you need. All right, so the night that, that we had our May Day, I just got on the radio, it was, there's been a collapse. We've got two firefighters trapped in the center of the building. We're trying to find a way out. That was it, that's all I got out. Kind of the you can <laughs> May Day. I didn't know you can back then. That's just what came out. So, 3616, there's been a collapse. We're trying to find our way out. We need people to, to find windows, or whatever the case may be. Okay? All right, this is going to be another example of some audio. 
audio attached to it. This is Prince William County, Virginia, uh, 2007. So this was a wind-driven fire in a very large home. I think it was three stories. They had heavy fire involvement on the second floor. So some of the things that they found when uh, NIOSH came in and did their report on it was that there was no free 60 size up. That was also in that Project Mayday from earlier. No 360. Okay. They also had no RIP company established. Uh, Passive device was non-functional on the individual that ended up dying. We don't have any information on why the pass device didn't function. And unfortunately, the victim was found partially on a couch looking at a window. Found him dead at a window. So we're going to listen to the audio. Um, it's got some subtitles that go with it. So let's see what we think here. <coughs> Initially, they had the captain right off the truck that was unaccounted for, then finding him. Um, it's hard to tell because the subtitles kind of dropped out and the audio is hard to understand, but I don't know if they ever declared that there was the firefighter was actually missing, or if that just came to be after the fact, but I don't know. Either way, this, uh, this individual was not the, the, the officer. 504, but he was a fireman. And uh, 
uh, it was up on the third floor. They said they had a total collapse. This is the picture of the home. So nice big home, homes that we would have in this area very easily. Uh, I'd say every, every town or area's got homes like this. So I think they were calling it third, but it's probably two and a half story. If I had to judge off the picture, they're up in the half story. Obviously, that's, that's him there. Uh, crud. Okay, here we go. So, bottom line, we need to May Day before it's too late. All right, that is it. Uh, if we skip out on May Day or we wait, it may be too long, and there may be no helping that situation. Uh, if you're performing an emergency escape, then it should be May Day and let them know. Tell them, if you came up to a situation where you think you might need to issue a mayday, you probably need to issue a mayday. If you're trying to escape out of a window, it's time to let somebody know, hey, things went south. What happens if you don't issue a mayday? And you don't make it out. Nobody knows you're trapped. You're gonna die. You only have so much air to work with. Fire's gonna continue to grow. They don't get that in. There was a, and not really made a per se related, but it goes along with the fact that we have to know, you have to let people know what's going on. There was an incident somewhere, I feel like it was in the Boston area a few years back, where they had a fire and it was an overnight fire in late evening hours. Fire department comes in, they do their thing, they put the fire out and they bring their investigator in. This department's big enough, they've got their own investigation team. So. That person shows up in their uh, investigator car, and everybody leaves. Everybody leaves the scene except for the investigator. And uh, some folks driving into work the next morning drive past this where this fire was located, and they see the investigator's car sitting there still. I thought, well, that's, that's kind of weird. He should have been long gone by now. So they stop to check on him, see what was up, and it turns out this guy had actually fell into this basement, the, the home had collapsed in and he's working this investigation fell into this basement somehow and excuse me he ended up dying in the, in the basement of his home on an investigation so you know the fact of the matter is we, we've got to stay together and at some some degree we have to leave some people back make sure that somebody's with our investigation teams or you know if you're going in to, to check on Check for extension, something simple. All right, stuff happens. Take somebody with you. Use that buddy system. Things can go bad, and they do. And if we don't know that you're in there and you got a problem, we can't help fix it. Personal made it. <laughs> Keep passing them up. All right, so personal made it. First thing we want to try to do is remain calm. How easy is that going to be when you have that situation come up? Yeah, it's not going to be very easy, right? Work to control your breathing. So this is one of those things that you're going to have to work on before the May Day event happens. So during your training, put stressful situations in your training plan and work your crews. Make them generate a lot of uh, exhaustion so that they have to learn and get comfortable with uh, breathing heavily and learning how to control their breathing in those situations. That would be about the only way that you're going to be able to prepare ahead of time for that portion of the mayday process. The next one, put it in red because it's, it's ultimately important. Have a radio. I know every fire department is not fortunate enough to spend the money to let everybody have a radio. Um, I purchased my own. I've been purchasing my own for quite a long time now and just happened to be fortunate enough that I've got one issued to me now. But it was something that I felt was very important back then when I started getting into the fire service and I went a short time without it and it actually made me really uncomfortable. I didn't like not having that means of communication on my body somewhere. Um, so that didn't last very long and I bought another radio. 
orient yourself to the immediate area. So if you have a Mayday event, you need to orient yourself. Figure out, kind of take a step back. Okay, what do I got here? Where am I at? Think about what you were doing. Don't become exhausted and unable to get you the Mayday. So don't sit here and try to dig your way out of a situation or run around doing circles around a, around a coffee table thinking that you're not getting anywhere. I argued with a guy one time in a fire because we we went in, just kind of made a right, made a left, kind of zigzagged into a room or two, and and no big deal. We were fighting fire, things were fine. I had a tick, and I'd been in the fire service long enough to understand when stuff's starting to go bad and what kind of things are going to happen and what you're going to see. And so this big brush of black smoke comes down on us. You can't see anything. You bring up the camera, and it's white. The camera's completely white. Oh no, I know now at this point in my, my time that this is bad. So at the same time, they blast the, the evacuation horn to get out of the building. So now you got the smoke, you got the tick, now you got the horn, so it's the trifecta of freaking you out. So what are you trying to do? You just want to get the heck out now. So me and the guy I was with start going this way, and he's like, no this way. I'm like, I can't go that way. There's a hole in the floor because there was a hole that we had passed up. He's like, no, the hole's over here. You need to go this way. I'm like, no, dude, the hole's are over here. <laughs> so we sat and argued for what seemed like an eternity about going the right way. And in reality, we were like eight feet from the front door. And he was right. But I would have sat there and did circles around what I thought was a hole in the floor and used all my energy. I would have ultimately wasted time on breathing air. So, simple call your crew may solve the problem. Hey guys, where are you? That's why we carry radios. You know, Brandon, hey, where'd you go? Well, I'm just right back here. Huh. You know, it may be a situation that you just can't see them, but they're right there within just yelling distance, and that's okay. So we're going to try to fix the problem. Once they have has been called, begin the process of self-rescue or extrication, if possible. Okay, if you've got the opportunity to try to get yourself out, by all means do. Something else we want to be trying to do is recall and review the situation. What were you doing? Who are you with? Are you still with those people? Can you count for them? If they're no longer with you, you're the mayday. <laughs> you are the lost person. Where were you? Where are you now? Every time you go into a building or a structure that's on fire, there's smoke, whatever, you need to be trying to paint that map in your mind of where you're going through the house and where you've been. Because the old days of what they teach in your firefighter one and two book is simply to pass a test. How they teach you to search? Right here, right? Go in left hand or right hand search, right? Okay, I'm going down this wall. Oh, there's a couch. I'm gonna go around it. Oh, going this way, going this way, and all that leads me back out to wherever I came in, right? Real life search, that's not how it goes. Okay? We're going in, the search is fast, we're checking egress and ingress paths where they walk, we're checking quick checks on uh, bedrooms, on the bed, and that's it, there's your primary search. Okay, so think about that. What were you doing, who were you with, where were you, and where is the closest exit? Where is or was the closest exit? So as I paint this picture in my head of where I'm going and when I'm moving through this house, I gotta be thinking, okay, I went into the right, I hit a hallway, and I remember seeing a bedroom, or I remember seeing a big bay window. For me, that would be a great thing to see. I'm gonna take a middle note of that. Bay window's down here. And I get down to the end of the hallway and I have a problem, all I, all I gotta do is turn my body around and I'm going back this way, that bay window's on my left. That was the last exit I remember seeing. I can find that. Your exit doesn't always have to be the same door that you came in on. 
It can be anything. Whatever was the closest thing to you. So train your people. When you're, when you're training, train them to become oriented with the rooms. Um, bedrooms. Bedrooms are a great room to get into um, because they, they all nearly have windows, right? When you go home tonight, take a look at your bedroom windows. In, in the bedrooms that you've got, look below the window. What's going to be below the window nine times out of ten on the floor? Uh, yeah, an air vent, the, the register, right? Take a look. Take a look around your house. Train your people to identify those things. It's those little things that are going to save your life or save, save your partner's life, whatever, right? I'm in a bedroom, I'm disoriented, but I find that register. Boom. Right ahead. Probably going to be a window. Okay? So think about that. So more on fixing the problem. Reorient, if possible. And exit to safety. Again, recall that memory. Take yourself five seconds, five to ten seconds, sit down in a, in a bathroom, whatever. Close that door, isolate yourself. Give yourself a second to just breathe and think about your situation. Okay? Big thing is keeping in uh, contact with Commander Ritt, whoever's coming to find you or whoever you're talking to. Okay, Keep in contact with them. You want to let them know what's going on your hair is doing, things of that nature. Okay, don't leave them on a wild goose chase. The wild goose chase in this case would be, hey, here's my Mayday information. I'm in the basement. Okay, well then you find a set of stairs and you go up those stairs and now you're on the first floor. But you didn't bother to tell them that you're on the first floor. Where are they sending everybody to find you? The basement. Yeah, they find you in the basement, right? You take it down there and you're not there. Now you're lost in the first floor. You need to tell them. If you're sure of where you're at, let them know that. If you're making progress, you know, things are getting better. The visibility is getting better. Uh, you're, you're getting cooler and not hotter. Those are all good things to continue pushing forward if you're making progress. If the situation is getting worse and not better, concentrate on being found. Okay? Because moving around, leading them on a wild goose chase, you're going to expend all your energy and in turn, breathing all your air. Okay, so that's the time that, hey, okay, I, I give up the white flag. I don't know where I'm at. I am lost. I'm going to isolate and tell them, this is where I was at. This is what I was doing. This is the last thing I remember seeing. Whatever information you can is going to be a benefit. And if you don't have that information, just tell them, hey, I don't know where I'm at. And then that's when the past advice comes. Activate your past device so they can hear where you're at. Uh, let's see here. I think we'll take, if you don't care, we'll just pause that and we'll take about 10 or 15 minutes and we'll come back.